Thank you so much, Gabby. That was really interesting. I loved it. It was a really good example of, I think I mentioned the difficulty of interoperability, and this is like another aspect of it completely, the language aspect, as well as the naming, the specific name. So thank you so much. Um, has anyone got a question? Oh, Jean Murray, brilliant. Yeah, uh, it's very interesting. And as you said, Emma, the language aspect. Do you think, Maria, that the language barrier has uh, made the, the spread or the fairness becoming slower because as you said you spend a lot of effort putting in spanish to english and that's only one person doing that so i think the acceptance can be can be difficult if people say no i'm sticking to to spanish or to english and and it block the community what is your perspective on that maria uh mi perspectiva y experiencia obviamente, es muy subjetivo lo que comento es que eh, es una barrera muy grande la que debemos atravesar desde el cono sur porque en nuestros trabajos en español, la gran mayoría de las veces no son leídos ni utilizados para hacer eh, relevamientos bibliográficos eh, realmente sí es, es un obstáculo en nuestras investigaciones. Yeah, thank you. That's not something we always consider, uh, and in our domain at least. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, Fightless is a very global community. And we have very large groups of researchers in South America and also in Asia. And obviously the languages are, are not English in those places. So they have a lot of publications that are not in English. And as Gabby says, it's important that those are put into literature reviews, like global literature reviews, and also really important that they're considered in our nomenclatures as well. And are, you know, we're hoping that the ontology that we're developing can include these as well because you can include different languages in ontology so we're really hoping that that can be part of it does anybody have any other questions sorry emma the, just to follow up on that so you are going to have in the ontology the term in English and the equivalents, for example, in Spanish, or when people will pick and and have, for example, if uh, Maria wants to publish in IDR, uh, <laughs> and so uh, all the the term could potentially be in Spanish. Does it mean that we'll have to do a mapping afterwards, or because most of the people will come? Let's say our infrastructure do not uh, allow multilingual search, uh, and mm -hmm. how this, you know, I'm thinking at the indexing perspective when you start mm -hmm. to index a content that is multilingual. How do you foresee that uh, as a global effort? I think that's a good question. One I probably don't have the answer to because <laughs> uh, uh, Celine is the one that is, is working on the ontology mostly and, and Zach and they're not here today. Um, as far as I understand, and Gabby might correct me because I think she's spoken about it before. Um, I, I understand that we will use, we're going to use the, the English uh, standard vocabularies as the sort of the baseline and then everything then will be compared to that so we will then create a uh, different language one compared uh, of the synonyms that are like used in the other language compared to that so it is yeah that's as far as i can explain it i think <laughs> um so i don't know francis do you know any of any ontologies that are in different languages Sobre to quizá Emma. yeah go ahead Gabby. El, el uso del código justamente eh, nos va a permitir estandarizar de manera más fácil mm. y el código está en inglés. Yes, the code. That's the thing actually. Oh, actually 
actually it's not the code it's the identification number isn't it so the, there's going to be an identification number that is related to each of the morphotypes and then that, that if you're using that particular number it actually doesn't matter the um the name that you're giving that is my understanding so francis might know better <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i was i was going to say um for the first question no i'm afraid i don't know of any ontologies that use different language like the same ontology with a different language um but i was just going to add to that that yes it should be the same code so if you're going to start off with english um i guess then it would be having the spanish as a equivalent like as a translation but the code should be the same so therefore for example if anyone did want to submit data about their metadata to um a repository where if their language is Spanish, you can then come to your ontology, find the identifier, and then they could still submit it in English um, would be the best way, I think. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that identification number. John Murray. No, but even from a, it's good to have that perspective because even from a, a coding perspective, because obviously you want to, store all that information probably in relational database at least for the metadata or flexible structure having the ability to handle the you know spanish that special character that english do not have we have seen that with the french from french and then all the accent have created at, at some time at some stage some trouble if you don't consider that so when you build a system can if hosting international data, all this kind of practical element need to be taken into account. Uh, yeah. right. But it, it's a uh, very, very interesting uh, from our perspective. Mm. I'd be excited if it's the first sort of multilingual ontology. That would be really exciting, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, right, so on that note, um, so I just want to say thank you so much to Jean-Marie and Gabby for their talks. Um, what we're going to do now, we've got 20 minutes left. We would really like you all to have some discussions with each other. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm wondering how to do this because I'm wondering if some people might like to be Spanish rooms. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a few breakout rooms so people, and I'll set up a couple of them to be Spanish rooms. Um, I'm trying to look at the names of people. Uh, if people tell me in the chat they want a specific Chinese one, I will make, well, maybe I will make a Chinese room too. And then there'll be two, there'll be, and then there'll be some English rooms for people to go into. What um, uh, I would like you to discuss is and I'm going to just share my screen is our questions which we've got about the phytolith um I can share the screen there we go. There we go. so you should be able to see um this one that says discussion I'm not gonna I'm not gonna present it okay um so we want to know we want you to discuss really what you think the fair data guideline should be for phytolith so should they, these are all the different points that we found in our study. Um, we've thought a bit about how to present the guidelines as well. So that's something that would be good for you to discuss. So some ideas that we've had is it could just be a document guide that you could just read. There are quite a lot of interactive checklists that are fair around, and I've put some links here to some there's one that's very automated and there's ones that are more like little checklists that you go down and then they give you like a summary of um what you've what you've ticked and suggest some ways to make your data more fair so we could make a checklist but a specific one for phytolith data um, i've also seen in some repositories they have metadata schemas or forms that are specific to particular communities um, that you then use when you would deposit your data into these repositories. So all of those could be options for us um, going forward. 
and the things to discuss are my questions about where do we go from here, so what changes could we make to our data publishing archiving, especially what things could you do now, what things would you find fairly easy to do now, what things would take a lot longer to implement, and um, what would need to happen to make that, so those hard things, what would we need to do to make that happen? So those questions are in our um, our shared document here, and it'd be really nice if you took you wrote some notes there as well. So if you don't want to go into a breakout room, you're very welcome just to write some notes uh, about those questions into the shared document. Stop sharing. I'm going to make some breakout rooms. Um, and we'll while, while you do that, Emma, I mm. don't know if Frances, if you put it last time, but we have some template or form if you know what people need to fill up when they mm. they submit to idr obviously that need to be I don't know, adjusted i would say to your community but that could be a a good starting point i don't know what you think francis but even having those concrete example help out and everything is on on github uh, so we can easily share yeah, that right yeah. yeah, we're happy to share it, but um, I have to warn everyone, it's very IDR specific, so therefore it's very image specific and it's very, um, but yes, um, if you'd find it useful, we yeah. can share mm -hmm. it, it's, it's open access. Um, but also, I guess, when one of the discussion points that you mentioned about repositories, I think if you've got several um, data sets that you want to submit, it's probably a good idea, I think. I would recommend that you sort of spend some time finding the right repository for your data. And therefore, um, you know, the submission process for each repositories, I would say, is, is different. Um, so therefore, if you identify a repository that's suitable for your data, and then you sort of, you know, after, you know, one or two times that you've done it, the submission process will get easier. Um, yeah. because you know exactly what types of data, what information is required. Um, so I think I would recommend that. Thanks, Francis. That's super helpful. Right, I'm going to um, just open the room. So please feel free to go off into one of the rooms to have a discussion with other people. Or if you just want to do a little bit of writing in our shared document, you can just stay here in the main room. And we'll have about, be about 10 minutes, actually. That's all the time we've got left. So I'm going to open the rooms. Also shout if you want me to put you in a room, if you don't find that you can get into a room. They're all open now. Anyone wants to pop up there to have a discussion? Maybe Gabby, do you want to go into one of the Spanish rooms? Thanks. Great. Should be able to do it myself. There we go. Frances, will you add the link to the, the document or do you want me to? Yeah, sure. Um, I can I can put that on the document. Yep, just now. We put a link of um of a repository we have Emma where we have actually mm -hmm. link in IDR. You know, people submitted imaging data and then they take a result, and we we develop a notebook and you know all this kind of story because it's quite a hopefully. The community fight fight to its data will reach that point, but it obviously mm. requires some effort from yeah. both sides, people hosting and also people uh, submitting. It's always yeah. a, it's a, it's a thing. Mm. Sounds good. Yeah, it'd be good to have some examples. That sounds great. I can see people are reluctant to go into some people are going into breakout rooms. Look to see if there's anyone in them because then you can go with somebody else. I should just send people off automatically. <laughs> oh no, people are going very slowly. Even in the community, it's the I know the imaging is maybe just JPEG image, but a lot are supported by images. You have a lot of knowledge, and the starting point is quite often images as well. In your case, well, there is only. a lot. Yeah, the reference material is all images, yes, and then so. there's a lot of people that do. Uh, measurements of the images and one of the sort of 
things that's happening at the moment is sort of an automation of that measurement and sort of AI models coming in to identify uh, the morphotypes. So I think the images is going to become more and more important, actually. Yeah, so I was saying even if it's, I, I, I know we are very much centric, but I don't think is we are that far apart in, in my mm. understanding of how the domain is. I, I will I will think, Francis, it's in the way I see it is in the spirit of the Tara Ocean in, in that because you have archaeological site that you yes, will as well. go yeah. to and then you acquire data there and then you you have uh, multiple yeah. information that uh, and yeah AI model would become um, yeah very that's the, that's the new thing that I think that will become more and more will be the, the sort of automatic identification of vitalists I think will become a thing because everyone does we have worked as a side note, we have worked with people in uh, Falkland. Do you remember, Francis, where they were using some of the tool that mainly for, they were initially for detecting cells, and, but they were using them to detect albatross on the cliff. So, you know, it, it I think works... that was before my time. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it works very nicely, but, you know, it, it there's completely different domain and you could imagine something similar. You, okay, you have to tweak the parameter yeah. and it's but it's still work you know it's it's an algorithm yeah. of detection whatever yeah. you give it to detect as you tweak the, tweak the parameter and you can yeah. still find it so we have a yeah. project at the turing called sci vision which is now so it's a computer vision package and it's used in multiple domains so it's actually used mm. uh, in antarctic on phytoplankton so like your mm. boat that's going on they wow. use it like that so it's on phytoplankton it's also used on um uh um detecting uh, moths and butterflies to identify different species mm -hmm. so they don't even have to capture them anymore they just have a camera and then they detect the different species that are there um, and they're also starting to um use it on cells as well for human cells so yeah it's interesting right um i can see people are not happy to go into breakout rooms that's absolutely fine by me but um i would really like to um have your feedback. So I'm just going to close the breakout rooms to bring those people back so they're not there on their own. Um, but I would really like to have your feedback on um, what you think is um, going to be the easiest thing to implement or to start doing yourself, uh, what things you think are going to be really hard and what things you would need to help you do those hard things. So I'm very happy if you turn your camera on and you speak up or you can just um, write some notes in the shared document. Thank you, Carla. I can see that you're writing in the chat there. I think everyone feels it's a Friday afternoon and they're tired. <laughs> or Friday morning for some people. <laughs> yeah, please do unmute yourself. You're very welcome to speak. Um, oh, thank you, Carla. Uh, I have a question actually for Jean Marie and Francis. Maybe you've said that in your talk. I I I, I admit that I was listening with one ear, and then I had people coming in the office to asking me questions. So uh, if you have said it already, uh, please forgive me. But um, when we think of a, of a repository such as the Five Core that we have. Uh, is your um, image database uh, ready in a certain sense to accommodate an entire um, repository that's already been uh, set up in a certain way? So it, is it, how would it be easy to sort of um, modify it um, in order to fit the requirements of like a fair uh, database, image database, or do you think it's better to actually sort of start start from scratch? I mean, and, and when when I say start from scratch, I don't mean like just collect the image from scratch, but basically, you know, just take the, the single images that are on the data on the fight core and sort of add them with the right metadata in your database. 
uh, I can say something. I don't, here. Yeah, I don't so, know if uh, it I, 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 uh, IDR is based on, uh, on a, a platform called Omero that we use for managing data in institution, imaging data in lab or anything. So IDR, I think, is the flagship for public data. What will be interesting to see if um, if is to get some information, uh, even one images uh, and some metadata you have, and we could put it into the system. It doesn't have to be IDR because we have a, a demo server that run the software called Omero. I will put a link in the document. And IDR is just the publication part of, of that. Uh -huh. And and I think looking at all the information you have, it's it will be a matter of running the system and put the images. What one thing to be clear is, we only put metadata in the database. The images do not live in the database. So this is okay. maybe te okay. technical element, but because the images we are dealing with can be extremely big, mm -hmm. uh, you are me. We are something talking about terabyte for yeah, some yeah. images. So this is very big. And uh, so, and then you can add a lot of information you, if associated to your image. You know, we have example where we, uh, I don't know, Francis, if you can launch an example where, where you could share the, where we have PDF associated, we attach CSV, anything, basically mm -hmm. anything that what uh, I've gathered, you collect as part of a study can be attached to an image to a, or a study or anything. So if you have, a, if you go on an archaeological site, for example, and you acquire you know, a thousand of images and you want to put only information for covering all the information that on, on all the images, you can do that. You have, um, you, you can, uh, yes, at, attach, you can view the images, you can play. It's not just a thumbnail, you have a viewer immediately available. Uh, the DOI part that we put is when you do at the publication level uh, of, of element. And th that is uh, something we we can provide ourselves with our institution that uh, allowed us to mint that. But just to see, even for you to play, if that could be a, the system for you. One, I would say, downside is, and I don't know how far you want to go, is if you run your own system, who is going to maintain that system? Yeah. That is always, because our software is open source. So if you want to take it today, you can take it. You can, in, but you will have to run it. Somebody yeah. will have to run it somewhere. And that is always uh, mm. the, the, the downside. Like, I was the IDR part, we run it, but we are grateful to uh, an institution called uh, EMBL EBI down in Cambridge that hosts everything for us because we host a lot of data. So we they offer us storage. For, for in your case, I don't think the volume of data is it, it's not too, too big, but still somebody need to run the system, mm -hmm. the upgrade check. And, and as, as you know, when you run uh, your own system yeah but it, it is it is possible to uh, and to, to what you will do probably if you had an existing system like like yours what what will happen is you will take probably all the images and get the metadata and translate it into how to importing the images is pretty straightforward is mm -hmm. is mapping the annotation after but if it's not too big that shouldn't be a, a problem at all but no, it's uh, uh, yeah, Francis. If you want share. to show, what? so if it, this is the IDR homepage, so I'm just gonna pick one study, uh, which is not this one. Here, take this. So you can see here, if you click here, you can see images. But if you go to the top level folder, if you go to attachments, you can see here. That there's a process text file which the submitter submitted. So if you want, if you had a PDF, we can basically add attachments mm -hmm. to your folders here. It doesn't always have to be images, or in some cases, sometimes here. In this example, in this for this particular image, there's these extra attachments that the submitter provided. So you can attach 
at an image level or you can attach at the sort of what we call sort of the project level. Um, so we can add extra attachments. Um, so depending on the type of data that you have, then yeah, this is possible. Um, and I'm in term, sorry, what's that, Jim? No, I was going to say a lot of the information you can see, for example, pixel, a lot of information that are in the image itself, we read them okay. if we can. So you might have file format or that are contain already a lot of metadata within the image, then we extract as much as we can. Because sometimes right. you want to know which detector you will use, mm -hmm. depending if uh, Emma was talking about a project. So that is done. You don't have to do that manually, like imaging method or anything like that. That's usually come from the file itself. But I also wanted to say there have been other um, like repositories which um, have come to the end of their life, let's say, um, which have been submitted to IDR. For example, we have um, IDR 114 that came from the HDBR project. So um, that was in um, their own repository before, but then they decided to submit their data to IDR so that um, they could keep the data in a public resource. Um, so that is also possible. Um, the important thing um, from our side is if we need a publication associated um, okay. with your data. Um, and, and sorry, and that could be, that should be a, a new publication or it can be it also? It can be an, it can uh, be an existing, yeah. It is, okay. it's, um, so if you have, if you have a publication about your repository and the data within your repository, that's also fine. It doesn't need to be a, a new publication. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think if you have uh, a study that you consider as a not groundbreaking, but that you think will be of quality for the community, that will be, I think, will be very interested to to host them. Even if it's, you decided to host it elsewhere after, I think just for showing what's what's possible, that will be, even to engage, because as as always, is finding fun and support. For, for this yeah. type of effort yeah. Yeah. and if idea. you say we are going to build a brand new system they say okay do, can, do you have the resource do you have the infrastructure the answer is no 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 so the the interest lower but if you say okay we we have already published and we can see a great benefit from the community then you can start off your own system and as mm -hmm. as we have shown you could let's say you have the vitalist uh, new vitalist uh, system in five years time you could link the two at some point or retrieve or yeah. migrate don't have to redo really it or anything it, yeah. it's uh, us you know omero um, um, uh, the platform idi is based on started you know 20 years ago yeah. and the system has evolved and it became very important to publish data historically the journal of cell biology started to they wanted to host themselves so a, a journal wanted to host themselves the data and they realized that's not going to scale or we stop the phone and, and idr came a bit from that maturity of knowledge and say okay now we are going to host and we have like dedicated francis is her time is dedicated to idr mainly mine is not but it, it's something we, we start we can you have shown that it's possible so you, it's easier yeah. to apply for funding and etc so if you have a study would we'll be more than welcome to to take it if it's just for showing what's possible in the field and uh, that would be wonderful from our perspective because we have also plant-based data mm. and you mix uh, diversity and people are quite interested in that great Thanks so much, Anne Marie. Uh, yeah. So I'll have to. I, I have quite a few. I'll, I'll come back to you. <laughs> yeah, come yeah. back because we've got to wrap up, unfortunately, because yeah. we're already <laughs> over time. Everyone will be. But thank you so much. I've got to say thank you so much to the speakers. Um, it was really, really interesting. Um, and I'm just going to share my screen one last time because this is our last session today. So I have some information just to give out, um, which is that it is our last session of this series. Um, we have done six workshops, um, which are now starting to appear on our website as sort of training material, which we are going to continually develop. So have a look there. All our videos are as a playlist on our YouTube channel. So you can just search Open Vitalist and it comes up on YouTube. 
um, and we're putting our slides uh, and also the videos as well actually onto Zenodo because YouTube is not actually accessible to everybody around the world so we found Zenodo is a very good place for the videos so people can then download them. Um, we're also as a group we're also going to be at conferences over the summer so we're going to be at the Quaternary Research in, in Cuba I think is its name um, the European Archaeology Conference and also there is a Phytolith Conference in September which we're going to be at um, and if you are interested in our ontology and working with us on that please do get in touch with us because it's going to take many many people to make that happen so um, we're always interested in people joining us in that effort. And just lastly, thank you very much to um, everybody that's helped in this series, particularly the ICOPS committee. So we've got um, here today is Carla and Gabby. And um, thank you very much to Jean-Marie and sorry, Francis, I meant to put your name there. Francis as well, he gave a talk in the last session. And I also want to acknowledge that some of my slides were coming from this uh, EOSC Life Fair Hackathon, which was a really good event, and particularly Katrina's talk on the fair principles. Um, so thank you very much, everybody. Thanks. And have a good thanks, weekend, Emma. everybody. <laughs> yeah, thanks.